An ugly comment was made on Kangana Ranawat very recently after she announced her participation in the Lok Sabha elections and this kindled quite a big conversation the social media was on fire but i was like wait a minute this is not happening for the first time right from mrs indira gandhi every other women politician in india have been through this slut shaming women in indian politics is a very common affair the beauty of a woman lies not only in her physical appearance but in her character intellect and action i am not saying this chanakya the great says this in chanakya niti but it seems like the modern age politicians don't agree with this there are two major sectors that we immediately think of when we hear the word women empowerment politics and cinema these two major sectors have been very actively vocal about equal rights for women among these two politics is the most important sector that directly affects every citizen in this country politicians are called people's representative for a reason now election season has started every party is actively campaigning it's very common to criticize the opposition parties their manifestos their loopholes and their way of working but have you noticed something a male politician is criticized for his work mostly whereas a female politician is criticized for everything except her work i know a lot of you must be thinking no it doesn't happen like that you're exaggerating things you're talking like this pseudo feminist and all No dear, I've got a proper data for this. During the three months of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, researchers looked at over 1,14,000 tweets sent to 95 women politicians in India, and they found that almost 14% of these tweets were abusive in nature. This means each women politician in India received around 113 abusive tweets every single day. Remember, this data is only about Twitter. Imagine the amount of hate in the rest of the internet. You know. negativity is very easy to spread and is being used against women to break their confidence for a lot of people life is very difficult they face failure in their jobs business relationship and even in marriage sometimes some people need answers to their problems some even need solutions now there is an app called astrotalk where you can talk to multiple astrologers sitting at the comfort of your home see we all have issues and problems in our life as i said earlier some people have issues in their relationship they want to know whether it should be long term or not or they want to know when will they meet that one person whom they're going to spend their life with or they want to know when will they get their job a settle in career we have so many questions now if you have such questions i am sharing the link of us to talk in the description below you can download from there and the best part is your first chat will be completely free whether you're seeking clarity in love career or even in personal growth using us to talk you can talk to a good astrologer and understand your game better now back to our topic shazia almi a politician from B- JP once made a statement and that left a deep mark in me. She said, "If they don't like my strong opinions, they do not comment on my work, but they call me a hoe in every language that is used in India." This is not a problem for only one women politician, but a problem almost every women politician face in our country, and it's not just men who make these comments. Even women politicians behave the same way with their fellow women colleagues. Recently, the Congress spokesperson Supriya Srinath a familiar face on TV posted on Twitter with a picture of Kangana kya bal chal raha hai mandi mein which means can someone tell what is the ongoing rate in mandi and she posted it with a picture of Kangana if you still don't understand she meant to ask the rate of Kangana a comment like this is not new for us this has been happening forever in India politics in India is largely a male affair where women participate at such every level from panchayats to parliament are viciously targeted mrs indira gandhi one of the most powerful leaders india have seen even she was once called as boongi gudiya which means a dumb doll at this point i seriously feel like people use this crude sexism as a way to discourage women from getting involved in politics popular tv channels criticized to mahua moitra for the brand of shoes he is using serious newspapers wrote article on page 1 about mayawati's bag on her birthday celebrations mayawati cutting her hair becomes a national news in 1999 jayalalitha one of the most powerful women i have seen was physically assaulted inside the assembly shoes and various objects were thrown at her her hair was plucked even one elected representative of the people who were present in the assembly pulled off her sari this was done by the opposition party but even her own party members when she was not a big person in politics 
pushed her down from the funeral vehicle of MGR. Banda Agus Satya Narayana from Andhra Pradesh made an ugly comment on actor and politician Roja that she had been an actor in blue films and accused her of having sexual relationship and threatened her of leaking those footages. A 92-year-old MLA from Karnataka passed a misogynistic comment on Gargi, a BJP candidate, that she's only fit to cook. Sanjay Nirupam, Congress MP, said about Smriti Rani that she was dancing on television yesterday and today she has become a politician and criticized what kind of character she has. And as some Congress leader said, Smriti Rani is the legitimate wife of Narendra Modi. Can we stoop any lower than this? A CPM leader from Kerala posted on Facebook that some women in Congress strip for male politicians to get tickets in election. Once Priyanka Gandhi Vadra changed her profile picture from a sari one to the one where she is wearing jeans and shirt and she got trolled for that. Maharashtra BJP chief Chandra Kant Patil once asked a women politician to go home and cook. I mean, why cooking is being looked down upon? Come on, yeah, it's a basic life skill. In 2016, BJP's Daya Shankar Singh said about BSP Supremo Mayawati that she's worse than a prostitute. BJP's Dilip Ghosh said about Mamta Banerjee when Didi goes to Goa, she becomes Goa's daughter. In Tirpura, she says Tirpura's daughter and asks her to decide who's her father. A BJP leader from Tamil Nadu once tweeted about MP Karnimuri that she is an illegitimate child born out of illegal relationship. How disgusting is that? In a recent case in Tamil Nadu, a speaker from GMK made an ugly comment on women BJP leaders while addressing a public meeting. He called those four women as items. He further said, Do you all know how many times my brother Ilaya Aruna did Kushpu? I hope you all understand what that means. And I can't even tell you the number of times Tamil Sri Saundaraj and a BJP leader in Tamil Nadu was body shamed for her looks. And when asked, she wouldn't even counter it. She would just smile and move on. So writing this content, I felt so ugly to write about it even for the video. And these are just very few examples. I can go on and on about the ugliest and sexist comments made on women politicians. And for common people like us, it became more like a masala element to see and enjoy the drama. Once a very senior women leader said, from the lipstick I wear to a smile I get from the senior male leader, all this is under constant microscopic scrutiny. The bags I carry, nothing is off limits. If I work harder than a male politician and get rewarded, the only reason the frustrated man will give us is that I use my feminine wiles to get where I am. It never ends. I thought when I cross 50, it would stop, but it continues. Seeing the slander, I break down but never in public because in India, women leaders can't have emotions and relationship other than the traditional ones. On one side, we talk about Nari Shakti, women empowerment, respect women, women are like mothers, blah, blah, blah. Whereas at the same time, on the other hand, we caricature, mock, taunt and demonize women. These insulting comments are not coming from any single party. No matter which party the women belong to, everyone has their own share of insulting comments received from their fellow colleagues. This is a serious problem. Of course, politicians do apologize after making these sexist comments when the matter go out of hands. But this is a common game. Leaders pass these comments, send out an apology and get away with anything. Even if there is an apology after the derogatory remark, it still shows the mindset of what they think about women. This is deep-rooted patriarchy and it has been here for years and it will take significant amount of time to get away with. Every party talks about respecting women and equality but they don't do anything to educate their leaders. They need to sensitize their leader or choose someone who is sensitive in general and disciplinary action should come from and within political parties. If the lawmakers of our country, those who represent us, have such a primitive mindset, how can we expect them to to give us security, welfare and protection to the laws of female population. If the women in power are not safe, what the hell are we talking about here?